Welcome everyone, welcome, welcome back to Klaus Kellerman's Basement. I'm your host, Klaus Kellerman, with the news. Let us switch to the news page now where the headlines are filled, filled and overflowing with coronavirus news. Coronavirus, what's happening in Canada around the world? The CBC reports that British PM, Prime Minister Boris Johnson from the UK, has tightened restrictions due to the threat posed by the Omicron variant. The British Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced tighter restrictions Wednesday to stem the spread of the Omicron variant, urging people in England to again work from home and mandated COVID-19 passes for entrance into nightclubs and large events. Johnson said it was time to impose stricter measures to prevent the spike of hospitalizations and deaths as the new coronavirus variant spreads rapidly. Indeed. It has become increasingly clear, says Johnson, the Omicron is growing much faster than the previous Delta variant. Where he gets his data, I don't know, and is spreading rapidly all over the world, just like all the other variants. And he said in a news conference, most worryingly, there is evidence that the doubling time of Omicron could currently be between two and three days. Johnson said that 568 cases of the Omicron variant have been confirmed in the UK and the true number is certain to be much higher. He neglected to say how many people, how many of those 568 have died or gotten sick or gone to the hospital. I've searched the internet for some of that information. Of the 8 billion people in the world, how many have actually been hospitalized with Omicron or died with Omicron, I can't find any information. Unfortunately, the people in Britain are not really listening or trusting Mr. Boris that much because it has come to light just recently. The moron so that he is. Government you know. faced increasing pressure to explain reports that Downing Street staff enjoyed a Christmas party that breached the country's coronavirus rules last year when people were banned from holding most social gatherings. Just as they banned a country of 60 million people from socializing right after they instituted a rule and locked you down, he and his party members had a party, Christmas party. They had no intention of following their own rules. They don't believe that it makes, they don't care about it. They don't see it as a public health rule or a safety precaution it's just a political uh, th they announced closures and then they went out and party the uk pm apologizes and aides resign he doesn't resign his aide resigns as the scandal over alleged christmas party and intensifies video a 2020 video of staffers recorded as british public was told to hunker down avoid indoor gatherings it is absolutely pathetic guys look at this bozo comb your hair comb your hair you moron british prime minister boris johnson on wednesday ordered an inquiry and said he was furious <laughs> he was furious after after a leaked video showed senior members of his staff joking about holding a lockdown breached breaching christmas party he was, he was furious that the video was found. <laughs> and he ordered an inquiry. Be careful, Boris. Maybe they're going to catch you on, on film with your underwear on your head, dancing around, passing the tequila around. This video has poured fuel on allegations that government officials flouted coronavirus rules as they imposed on everyone else. Do as I say, don't do as I do. Now, think of what's in these people's brains, guys. Think of, as they're ordering you to lock down and they're scaring you and they're, uh, and they're spewing all this stuff and imposing all these restrictions, they don't care. They don't see it as a threat. They, they, they don't even believe uh, the rules that they're imposing because their actions speak for themselves. They're out partying while they're telling you not to. It's just uh, uh, the most monumental heap of bullshit that, uh, that you can even imagine. Boris says, uh, I understand and share the anger up and down the country as staff members seem to make light of lockdown rules, Johnson said. Oh, he's angry. I was also furious to see that clip. 
he told lawmakers in the House of Commons, I apologize unreservedly for the offense it caused up and down the country and apologize for the impression it gives. It gives the impression of exactly, it gives the impression of the truth that you guys don't give a flying fuck uh, about rules and restrictions. Guys, there are no freedoms anymore in the world. Uh, I've learned that there's no such thing as a, as a freedom. We have um, privileges uh, that can be taken away like that by morons like this who right after they take away the your privileges they go on and and, and party they they're the only ones with privileges we're all fucked just just pathetic the video recorded on december 22nd 2020 and aired late tuesday by broadcaster itv showed then press secretary uh, Allegra Stratton appearing to joke about an illicit party at the Prime Minister's Downing Street office. Was the Prime Minister there? Do you usually let your MPs have parties there without you? Another aide played, playing a journalist says, I've just seen uh, reports on Twitter that there was a Downing Street party on Friday night. Do you recognize those reports? As laughter is heard, Stratton they're like making fun. This is they're they're at the party. They're probably hammered, and they're making fun of it. Another aide was pretending he was a journalist. You know, he said, "I've just seen reports on Twitter that there was a Downing Street Christmas party on Friday Friday night. Do you recognize those reports?" And laughter is heard. Stratton, the press secretary, says, "I went home and asked colleagues." What's the answer? Another voice can be heard saying, "It wasn't a party. It was a cheese and wine." Is a cheese and wine all right? It was a business meeting, uh, uh, said the laughing Stratton. There she is. You fucking... <laughs> Prime Minister of Office denies party was held. He denies the party was held. They've got it on videotape. He denies that the party was held. For several days, John Smith's spokespeople have insisted that no party was held and no rules were broken. But on Wednesday, Johnson said... He had ordered British, Britain's top civil servant, Simon Case, to investigate. He said anyone found to have broken the rules would be disciplined. Come on, own up to it, Boris. You were the ringleader and you were at the party. Come on. What a, what a hoke of fucking shit. Oh well, guys. Finally, finally, I've, I've seen one story from one uh, reporter on what is normally a kind of a left-wing government supporting uh, and government funded news site published this story the title being on covid restrictions our governments keep firing up the gas lights and shifting the goalposts if you give the government an inch on your rights they will go for the mile every time and he goes on th this is a story that's worth reading guys this is a story that's worth reading have you met the provincial vaccine targets? Great. But now it's time for a booster. Are ready for a temporary vaccine passport system to expire? Sorry, we need to extend it through spring. Proving once again that if you give the government an inch on your rights, they will take a mile. Less than a year ago, this is in Canada, government and public health officials touted vaccination as a panacea to end the pandemic. It's safe, effective, and will allow the country to put COVID behind us, we were told. To that, to that end, citizens were encouraged, prodded, and even threatened to get their shots, with holdouts demonized by politicians at all levels. Yet in Ontario, uh, even as the province exceeded by weeks its vaccination and case number targets uh, that the, of the government's phased reopening plan, citizens were offered only breadcrumbs in return, moving up phase three reopening by just a few days with no plans uh, or time to complete the full reopening. So even though they're hitting their targets in Ontario, hitting vaccinations rates of like 80% of people are vaccinated, they're still not opening up. The goalposts are shifting again. And now with new cases in Ontario, essentially split 50-50 between unvaccinated and fully vaccinated and questions waning about questions about waning vaccine efficiency, 
the goalpost shifts with the roller rollout of a booster shot everywhere in the country and calls for expanded eligibility. Now, apparently, we all need a booster shot. One does not have to look far or guess what the next step will be across Canada. In Israel and in France, the definition of fully vaccinated was changed. They just changed the definition to include boosters. Those six months out from their second dose or first booster are now considered unvaccinated. So if you've had two shots and six months go by, you are considered unvaccinated in Israel or France. Get ready, guys. Get ready. It's coming to a country near you. It's going to come to Canada soon. Three shots is going to be the minimum. Let's see which country is going to be the first country in the world that says, well, if you haven't had 11 shots, you're not fully vaccinated. There is, of course, the popular rebuttal that these goalpost shifts are entirely above board as the science evolves. But that exposes the flaw inherent in government's COVID response. For nearly two years, debate and dissents from the burdensome COVID restrictions has been short-circuited with demands that citizens now trust the COVID, science. Trust the science. Trust the science. Debate. Trust the science. Every infringement on citizens' privacy, mobility, autonomy, and conscious rights has been justified by officials in the name of the infallible technocratic might of the science. No matter what rule they impose, they say, trust the science. But when proven wrong, or more importantly, unpopular in the polls, the former rock-solid science on which officials acted is simply dismissed, out of hand. It is for this precise reason that checks and balances exist in the government to prevent rule through unaccountable technocratic appeals to authority. Debate and dissent in the age of COVID, however, have become four-letter words. You're not allowed to disagree. We're not allowed to have a conversation about it. We're not allowed to have any common sense. We just have to bend over and take it. Our political health officials and elected politicians should not at this point expect any benefit of the doubt, considering that we are still taking our shoes off uh, and binning bottles of water at the airport 20 years after 9-11. And the guy's making the analogy here that the fact that we still have to take our shoes off 20 years after uh, uh, 9-11. These restrictions are here to stay, guys. The, these restrictions are here for the rest of our lives in some countries. Don't expect them to go, to, go away. It's Indeed, officials have shown they are not above apparent falsehoods uh, to further their aims. They outright lie. Last week, Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Kieran Moore, justified the immunization of children between the ages of 5 and 11 by claiming hospitalizations and case counts for that age were increasing. Yet according to Ontario's own data, there has been zero hospitalizations in that group in the past two weeks at the time of Moore's statement. So they just lie. Just make it up. There's always another threat. As the American Civil Liberties Union, there will always be a new disease, always a new threat of a new pandemic. Accordingly, the number of boosters or the percentage of fully vaccinated citizens needed for a return to normal will always be N plus one. Meet one metric and be met with two more. As the ACLU continues, if the fear of disease justifies the suspension of liberties and the institution of an emergency state, then freedom and the rule of law will be permanently suspended. There will always be a threat. There will always be a threat. Already we can see public health officials priming the pump for the next goalpost shift in Canada. Even, Even if vaccine uptake is high among 5 to 11 year olds, it will still not be good enough. According to Theresa Tam, Canada's chief public health officer, toddlers under the age of four will be the next to need shots, claiming with an absolute lack of shame that unlike the other times we were promised an end to this pandemic, vaccination of that group will be a turning point. She claimed this on TV that vaccinating toddlers People between zero and four years old, once we vaccinate them, that will represent a turning point in our fight of COVID. Not until we do. So the goalposts now are shifted that 
now we must wait till toddlers are vaccinated before we're safe. The government, of course, will never walk back its emergency powers of its own volition. Never. And why would they? After two years of fomenting terror and division among the population, they have cultivated a solid base of support that combines the post 9-11 see something, say something paranoia of the middle class yuppie with the <laughs> umptuous 1980s moral majority sense of superiority. Until public opinion turns sharply against government overreach, we will continue, continue to live in an artificial, prolonged state of emergency, beholden to the whims of bureaucrats and elected officials. Well said, well said, well said. The author of this article, Alan Richards. The goalposts just keep moving, guys. The goalposts just keep moving uh, farther and farther and farther. And there will be no end. There will be no end to uh, uh, travel restrictions and uh, mandates and shutdowns. It's like it, if, it, if it wasn't, if it wasn't, um, if it wasn't pathetic, it would be funny. But it's not funny. Guys, how many times... Uh, can you go into a theater and call fire and expect everyone to rush out for the exits? The first time you do that, people may rush out to the exits and then they'll look around and say, well, there is no fire. The second time you do it, maybe a couple of people will rush to the exit. But if you do it every day, if you go to the movies every day and you, and you, you yell fire, 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 eventually people are going to say, shut the fuck up and throw you in jail. 